project is known for their affordable, great turntables and some time back I reviewed the fine Probox S2 Digital DAC and Preamp. From the same designer now the Streambox S2 Ultra, a very small streamer that in my memory will live on as giant little dwarf. The project has a large collection of small devices, ranging from RIAA pre-prees, Bluetooth receiver, DACs and a CD player that is twice as wide to fit a CD transport. The Streambox S2 Ultra measures only 103 by 115 by 37 mm. The front holds a power button, a power LED, a LED that indicates that the unit is ready for network use the USB slash PC button on this preliminary sample called bypass that lets you select input directly from a PC, a LED to indicate this function is enabled and a USB 2 port for connecting a storage device. On the rear a micro USB port for connecting the PC directly. When this function is used the USB signal from the PC is cleaned up and sent to the DAC connected to the DAC USB output. Next to it the aerial for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the 18 volts DC input to connect the supplied wall ward switch mode power supply to, an HDMI output to connect to an AV receiver or optionally connect a display to, the 100 kilobit Ethernet port, a second USB port for connecting a storage device and a specially configured USB port for connecting your DAC to. A small button labelled Boot enables experienced users to install alternative firmware. My suggestion is not to use this button unless you are absolutely sure what you are doing. Like the Probox S2 Digital DAC, this device is designed by John Westlake. The man has an impressive track record and when I spoke to him during the high end Munich 2018 show it became rather clear why. The man is passionate about sound quality and knows how to translate that passion into very good sounding equipment. That's what you see when you open the stream box. It is based on an industrial version of the Raspberry Pi, the CM3L that is mounted using an edge connector as used for PC memory cards. This version doesn't hold interfacing and storage memory. The network is connected over an Ethernet connector with integrated transformers for galvanic separation and an SMSC Ethernet receiver chip does the 100 base Ethernet and, I gather, the PC USB interfacing. A fully shielded radio module takes care of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Then we get to the power regulators. I think this is one power regulator while here three step down regulators are mounted. This is one of the things Westlake stressed when I spoke to him. Provide independent stable voltages to the different circuits. I guess, although I'm not sure, that this is the USB interfacing for the storage media while this part is a completely separate USB channel for the DAC using a USB hub chip that is externally clocked by this crystal. When you first use the Streambox and type the IP address your router gave to the Streambox into your browser, it automatically starts the setup wizard. First you select your language. A large number of languages is supported as you can see. It then asks you to give a name to the Streambox to identify it on the network. The suggested name is far too long. I changed it to Streambox. This way the next time you want to log in, you simply type streambox.local in the address bar of your browser. The third step is to set your DAC as output. For this video I used a Meridian Explorer 2 and that was the only DAC I could choose. Then you could connect the Streambox to your Wi-Fi network. As you can see the Wi-Fi space is rather crowded where I live so I rather use an Ethernet cable. The last thing to do is either to add a USB drive containing music like I did or point the Streambox to your network volume that contains the music, like the rock server I used as music server. 
The basic settings are done now, time for some fine tuning. To change some more settings I click the cog in the top right corner and select my music. Here we see the number of albums that are already indexed. Since this takes a lot of resources I have paused it here to let it continue indexing later. I have no network drive active and since I don't have a Spotify account I leave that blank. I do have a Tidal account so I enter my username and password. The only thing to change here might be to activate Rune Ready when you are a Rune user. In playback options you might change the DSD settings depending on your DAC. I would leave the rest as is unless you want to use volume control. Settings depend on your DAC used. The same goes for resampling. If your DAC isn't the best you might switch upsampling on in the stream box. The next step is to set the appearance. You can choose for a background showing a project turntable but I prefer this light green option. The next menu shows the network settings. As you can see the stream box is wired into my network but also started a Wi-Fi hotspot so guests can easily log in to play music. A user interface automatically pops up. If you don't want that or want to password protect the hotspot this is the place to go. The remaining menu options are not of importance but it doesn't hurt to browse through them if you have obtained the unit. Using the stream box is a breeze. Simply connect your DAC to the designated USB port and check the playback options menu if your DAC is selected as output device. You could also use the HDMI as digital output. Project chose the OEM version of Volumio as player software which makes sense. The shareware version is already used and thus beta tested by countless users all over the world since 2013. Operating the Streambox as a streamer is done in a browser on a smartphone, tablet or computer or using an app on the smartphone or tablet. The browser interface has three screens. Browse, Playback and Queue, selected by tabs along the bottom of the screen. Select Music Library to go to your own music. The choices here are clear, perhaps with the exception of Media Server and USB. Media Servers let you browse and play from shared volumes on a computer or NAS and USB does the same for the USB drive. This is handy if you know the place of a file on the hard disk but not the correct name. As you can see scrolling through albums is quickly enough. From there you can easily play the album or add it to a queue or playlist. Clicking the name brings you to the individual tracks of that album and again you can easily play that track or add it to a queue or playlist. If you then go to the playback screen you see left the track progress with below it three icons. The hard to mark that the track is a favorite the plus sign to add it to a playlist and a menu to go directly to the album or artist. In the middle the three transport buttons, the album name, track name and artist with below it the cover art. On the right side the volume control and mute. The cue screen lists the playback cue and here you can set shuffle, play and repeat, save the cue as a playlist and clear the cue. The Streambox S2 Ultra plays anything up to 384 kHz 32 bit and DSD 256. Your DAC has to support it too of course. Internet radio is well supported by Shoutcast and Dribble. Radio stations can be added to your favorite radios and you can search by country and by genre. Playing music from your smartphone using Bluetooth is a matter of selecting the Bluetooth logo and pairing your smartphone. The same goes for AirPlay, here called SharePoint Sync. The USB PC button does the same as the push button on the front. If you have entered your Spotify account a button will appear here as is the case with Tidal. When you select Tidal the obvious menus are shown. And the last option is Rune. 
there is no button for it since it will automatically switch over, provided you enabled Room Ready in the My Music menu. In all cases the playback screen shows the music source plus the metadata. Even when playing from Room, the track progress and volume control work. I did have high expectations given the approach of John Westlake, but my expectations were not entirely correct. How shall I say this? This is the best streamer I had on review so far with the exception of the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo. Using the supplied switch mode wallboard power supply, it did about 75% of the quality of the SMS200 Ultra Neo with the S-Booster MK2 power supply. Please do realize that this combo cost over two times the price of the Streambox. Remarkably, adding the 18 volts DC S Booster linear power supply, not the MK2 version, brought it up to 80% of the SOTM quality. An improvement for sure, but not as much as I usually experience. This must be due to the elaborate power circuits inside the Streambox. Up till now I compared the Streambox playing by itself versus the SOTM playing as Rune Endpoint. Driving the Streambox from Rune 2 gave another 5% increase in sound quality, making its score only 15% below the SOTM. This is an extremely good streamer and Rune Ready renderer given its price. Slightly less sibilance control, only slightly less, somewhat less deep lows and a little less overall resolution. But it is clearly better than the original SMS200 without the Ultra Edition. This is a product that I easily allow in my 20k Euro setup 1. Man, this was a surprise, I didn't see this coming. Giant Little Dwarf, this is the association that came up during one of the listening sessions. It looks like a 300 Euro Midfi gadget, but don't be fooled, this really is a network bridge of very high quality that is only a nose length behind the SMS200 Ultra Neo. The Dutch retail price is 779 euros but prices differ per country. It is a good solution for those fathers that have children that want Spotify. That can play from Tidal while the children play Spotify over the same system. And if that is in for room, right away or later on, that's going to work too. These are the products I keep looking for since they make me very happy. So please keep sending suggestions. I can't always answer them but I read them all. And if you are interested in more of these reviews, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated. The links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.